Welcome to the Sales Influence Podcast, where we talk about finding the why in how people buy. I'm your host, Victor Antonio. Thank you for joining me today. So glad you're with me. Today, I want to talk about messaging. In other words, how do we get people to buy more of our products if we put out the right message? The question is, what should the message be? Again, I get a lot of questions, and this one is one I often get also. It's, Victor, I'm doing a presentation. You know, what, what do I need to talk about? What do I need to address first? In other words, in terms of sequencing, right? In other words, what do I need to talk about? What are some of the hot points? And then, you know, how do I sequence this stuff? And I'm always like, whoa, 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 wait, zoom back, zoom back. Let's go back to the ABCs. In other words, let's get back to the basics if we want to sell more effectively. Too often, we get caught up in the PowerPoint and all the information we want to throw up on the client that we just don't take time to step back and say, what is it that the customer is thinking about? Now, in any product or service you're selling, the customer needs to answer, and you need to feed them that answer, of the three biggest whys. I'm going to talk about the three big whys. And the first one is when you're presenting your product or your service, the customer's thinking, why this? In other words, why this product? Why this service? Maybe they're currently using something, so they're saying, well, why this versus what we're using now? Or maybe they're using some type of alternative, maybe not a direct competitor. They're going, well, this seems to be working well, so why this versus that? And you need to be able to answer that question. In other words, you need to be able to differentiate what you're offering compared to what they're currently using, whether it's a direct competitor or a substitute complementary type of product. So for example, if you're selling a CRM, right? A customer relationship management system where you store all your contacts. Now, if they're using something similar, they're asking themselves, well, why this versus what we're currently using? Or if they're using a spreadsheet, they're saying, well, you know, the spreadsheet seems to be working okay. In other words, it's not a direct competitor, but, you know, it seems to be working okay. You need to show them in both cases, whether it's a direct competitive or an alternative substitute complementary type solution like an Excel spreadsheet, you need to show them why it's better. Now, in this case, obviously, it's easy to differentiate why the CRM is better than a spreadsheet. But maybe when you're dealing with a direct competitor, you have to dig deeper when it comes comes to finding points of differentiation. So again, the customer's first big question, why this versus what we're currently using? That's the first big why. Number two, why now? In other words, I'm using this, you know, maybe I can just do this next quarter. Maybe I can do it next year. Why now? You need to create a sense of urgency when it comes to your product or service. In other words, Mr. Customer, I'll tell you why now. And you have to show them how they're missing out on revenues because they're not using your product or service or how they could be reducing their costs, saving how much money they're losing by not using your product. So that's reducing costs. Or maybe, as I always say, show them how much more market share they can gain by using your product or service. And if you can quantify that, if you can quantify that in terms of value, like a number, this is how much you're losing, this is how much you could be making, this is the cost you could be saving, X amount of dollars. Given that the fact that you're losing 5% market share every year, that represents this amount of money. That's quantification. If you can quantify, you answer the question, why now? Let me tell you why now, Mr. Customer, because here's where you're losing money. And that's the second why. The third why, and this is where you really have to sell yourself and your company is like, why you? Why you versus somebody else? Why don't I just buy from somebody else instead of you, Victor? Why your company? And this is where you really have to sell yourself. Now, notice the sequencing here. First, why this? In other words, why do you need our product or service? Then two is why now? And then lastly, why us? Why buy from us? Now, too often, salespeople start out their presentation answering the why us. In other words, they start talking about their company before they even start talking about the solution or why the customer needs the solution. Don't talk about you from the very beginning. Don't open up your presentation saying, hey, here's who we are. Here's how long we've been around. Here's how big our company is. Here are all the companies we work with. They don't want to hear that. What they want to hear right off the bat 
is why this product and why now? What, what's the urgency? If you can answer the why this, why you need this, Mr. Customer, and why you need it now, then that's a natural progression into why you? Why should I buy from you? So again, look at your presentation, ask yourself, are you sequencing these priorities? The first why is why this product, second why is why now, and the third one is why your company. If you sequence it that way, you will see a difference in your close rate. That is it for this Sales Influence Podcast. Don't forget to leave me some feedback on iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. Let me know what you think. I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, check out my online sales training platform, the Sales Mastery Academy. Over 25 courses, 300 videos, 13 of my books. And again, every month I'm adding a new program onto the platform. And again, if you're serious about increasing your sales ability, go to salesmasteryacademy.us. That's salesmasteryacademy.us. Lastly, I want to thank you for listening. This is Victor Antonio always reminding you, selling ain't hard when you know how. Take care. Hi, I'm Victor Antonio. I'm an author, sales trainer, and keynote speaker. I'm often asked, what makes a great speaker? Is it someone who delivers real content that the audience can use? Is it someone who engages the audience so they're part of the learning experience? Or is it someone who can motivate an audience to push them beyond their comfort zone and discover new abilities? The answer is yes. But the most important thing to remember is that I'm not there to look good. I'm there to make my client look good. Simply put, it's never about me and it's always about them.